Iguanas, although by themselves, are fascinating creatures. But like any animal that's allowed to grow in an area that has no natural predator, has all the food and shelter that it needs, will grow and, and really overcome the area. So in South Florida, they've done just that. The problem with the iguana is that they, they live near humans. Of course, they live in the wild where there are animals that will prey upon them. But in domesticated areas, we don't have these creatures. So the iguana is allowed to grow in, in great, great numbers, and they produce quite rapidly. Simple math is the female iguana is uh, physically prepared to lay eggs at about 18 months. So given that fact, you know, the first year and a half, if they live to be 11 or 12 years old, you're still looking at 96 to 100 iguanas she can give birth to in her lifetime. What iguanas tend to do is they, they don't need water to survive, but they've learned that the water is their escape. So they will either nest, burrow, or sit near water. Canals, pools, lakes, what have you. And the most common is they defecate by the pool, in or around the pool, which of course now becomes a health risk to humans. When we get calls from a homeowner who says, I have one iguana, our, our question, of course, what is the iguana doing? Uh, is it doing anything detrimental to your lifestyle, defecating in the pool, damaging your property? When we hear something like, well, it's sitting down by the dock and defecating, we say live and let live. This is wildlife. This is why we love Florida. Uh, when we hear something more like the defecating in the pool and there's multiple iguanas, five or eight, then in that case you need to do something. So we, we, we approach the situation very carefully, especially if we're talking about a, a, a tot lock, a playground for children, then that definitely needs to be addressed. You must take a child's well-being above anything else. Homeowners can do a number of things. The, the, the most common sense is don't plant what they eat. Hibiscus, bougainvillea, annuals, orchids, rose. I mean, there's so many plants that they eat. In Donaldson Park, what we do is we combine trapping with aggressive removal. We do employ the, the best tools that can be purchased. We do training so that everyone is certified in what they do, so that we can, we can use tools that are the most effective in serving this, this, this end, this need. Again, it's the uh, lesser evil of what we have to do, unfortunately, but we do make sure that we approach this, this problem as in, in a very humane way as possible. Our methods are far above any state or local agency. For example, F Florida Wildlife Commission only states that you need a high power pellet device. So we employ a high power pellet device that we modify to our needs so that it's very, very accurate. They don't require any kind of certification in, the, in these tools, so to say. But we make sure everyone's certified every year in our company, even though they've been certified before, to, to, to substantiate and get a certain base level of accuracy, base level of competency within the organization so that what we do is highly effective. We address the issue regarding cruelty to animal in the following way. People that are passionate about any animal being harmed are there for a purpose. They are not our adversary. I support their course 1,000 fold. Without these concerns, there would be mayhem, quite frankly. So we need people to have that concern, to push that forward into the front, to say, how are you dealing with this? What are you doing? And so on. So, so that is something that we deal with very carefully. No one is getting rid of ants, rats, roaches, or iguanas. What we attempt to do is to control the population. Our programs are designed to keep that to a minimum as well. So no one is eradicating iguanas. They are here to stay.